Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 220 for Tuesday, July 30th, 2019. <laughs> Greetings, folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast that is by, for, and about working musicians here, back, finally, in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Las Gatas, California, it's Paul Kent. How? It's been a while since we've since we've done the show, but it's actually also been a while since you and I have chatted because the various travel and on both, I guess, on both of our both of our parts. Although I I certainly had my own fair share or more than fair share, so it's good yeah, to talk. I'm to nice. You. Yeah, you too. I've had a nice couple of weeks off. I had a week of vacation and another week that I was supposed to go away and it actually fell apart. And so I actually had a nice, stealthy uh, weekend to myself in the summer, which doesn't really happen all that often. I I had exactly that happen. So after we talked uh, the last on the last show, I mentioned how I was um, eager to see how our midnight performances of Hedwig and the Angry Inch would would go mm -hmm. when we opened, which I think was just like three or four days after you and I talked. Well, less than 12 hours later, I got an email saying that the first two of four weekends of Hedwig were canceled. They realized that they had uh, actors that were doing openings for two other shows, Hair and Evita with Tech Weeks back to back. And our midnight performances and midnight rehearsal of Hedwig were in the middle of that. So they would have had like, I don't know, it was like 14 performances in, in nine days or something like that. It was it was no bueno. And uh, they were worried about the health of these people. So um, so the Hedwig was canceled. And I thought I have a stealthy weekend free to myself. But I I was not as well. I don't regret my decision, but I wasn't as. Uh, I did not make the decision you did, although that sounds delightful. I uh, I wound up going to a conference in Chicago this past weekend. Well, let, let me pause. I I it was stealthy, and I got called, and I did a I did a corporate I did a fill in gig. So I did <laughs> I did a quick one, a two hour six to eight p.m. on Saturday. I still got home in time to take my wife out and and oh, uh, get nice. some of a Saturday. Yeah. So so, it, but it was nice to pick up a, a little unexpected thing and. And, yeah. uh, but yeah, it was, so, okay. everything was so low key. So, and two weeks, I haven't seen my band in two weeks. We're going to play this Friday night for the first time. Well, we haven't had a two week break in many, 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 many months, but I actually thought it would be useful to start our conversation today, kind of acknowledging the news of what happened at that Gilroy garlic festival. I'm sure you heard about it in North Carolina. I, I in, heard uh, about in New it. Hampshire. It, it. Yes. I, yeah, I, I, right. I was actually, I was in, uh, it was it was Sunday, right? That this happened. Yeah, it was Sunday. It was uh, twenty minutes before the festival closed. It's a it's a festival in a rural town about forty miles south of San Jose, and um, uh, it's been going for forty one years. It's a huge revenue, you know, generator. Huge community event. It's the Gilroy Garlic Festival, and it's this uh, this shooting that happened hits home in a couple of ways. Um, I have well, family quite, at work quite literally near home for you. Yeah. 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 And again, you know, the guy there's, there's metal detectors that people walk through to get into this outdoor festival. I mean, they've, they've thought through security quite significantly. This guy cut over a Creek, cut through a fence and mm -hmm. entered and entered the property. And, and um, it's a festival that my band has played several times and sure. it's uh, and this happened 20 feet from the stage that my band has played several times. And in fact, a friend of mine's band was on stage when it happened. And the guy who was closest was a house rocker for about two years. And, and as a friend of mine, wow. and he saw wow. the whole thing happen. And, um, you know, he was Jack Van Breen. The band is oh, Tin Man. I, yeah. I remember Jack. I, 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 he was in the band when I flew out to play your birthday. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Gypsy Jack. Yeah, Gypsy Great Jack, player, I love that you know, guy. Yeah. He's legendary around here. I mean, he's been playing since the 70s. Great player, great guy. Works at the the local guitar store mm -hmm. and and uh, is great friend to everyone. Uh his band Tin Man, super classic rock band. They they were interviewed on all the local news. I saw Jack quoted and Tin Man mentioned on CNN, you know, on a international report about yeah. the event and 
I reached out to Jack and the other guy in the band that I know pretty well. And, you know, they were obviously shaken. Jack was going to actually take some, some of the offered counseling um, that was being offered, but he literally saw the, the gunman and um, wow. he heard, he heard a sound about 50 feet to his side. He turned, saw the gunman, saw the gun and um, said to the band off stage now. And they all sheltered in place under the stage with the sound crew while this was going on, uh, he sent me a note that it's really not the type of thing you'll ever forget, which you can imagine. Right. Yeah. The only thing, I mean, I, obviously I wasn't there, um, but the only thing that, that pops into my mind or the first thing that pops into my mind when, when you're describing Jack's, you know, recollection of this is Altamont. Right. I mean, like with the stones on stage and like the, there's videos of that. So I've at least yeah. experienced that. Like that's the closest I can. That, that's how my brain tries to relate this. And and that's scary to to watch. And it happened, you know, decades before. And it's a video. And it's like it's just. Yeah, I can. I can't imagine what any of those people went through. That's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. And so. You know, uh, they said that they actually could hear gun bullets hitting like right in front of the stage when they were underneath the stage. And so it's it's literally that close to home that, you know, they were in harm's way. You know, children died and, um, you know, a, a, a wonderful community that has raised, the, you know, what they do with the money is they give it to charity. Right. It's a it's a nonprofit organization. Forty one years they've been serving their community. And, uh, you know, who knows, you know, you know, what this does to something like that. It's, it's just such a tragedy. And I, you know, again, I, I, I'm sad for my friends who are now emotionally scarred there. They are just trying to, you know, put some happiness into the world and play some rock and roll. And some crazy guy, you know, comes and just literally explodes the moment, you know, and wrecks people's lives. And, you know, in all selfishness, I'm going to be playing for two or 3000 people on Friday night. It does cross my mind. How safe are we ever really yeah. in some of these large things? And, you know, you have to persevere and you can't, you know, you can't stop living your life. No, you, yeah. Things. Fear-based decisions but, rarely, uh, are, it, it's not the way to live your entire, the entirety of your life. That's right. Yeah. And again, you know, the comparisons to Altamont, it's a very different world with regards to gun violence from when Altamont <laughs> happened. Right. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's just a tragedy on so many levels. And so, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge Jack and the Tin Man guys and, you know, wish them well and healing. And we play many gigs a year in the, in the Gil in Gilroy and in the Gilroy area. And, you know, the, the nice people there, the great, it's a, you know, 50,000 people community. It's not very big. Yeah. And uh, this is, this is their, this is their yearly party and they bring people from around the world for this. And it's, you know, got a great reputation and, you know, it does so many good things and it's really a, you know, this one hit close home for me, you know, making me think about, about my performing life a little bit, but mostly just, it's just so heartbreaking that, yeah. uh, that these things happen in our world now. So I just well, thought I'd take a moment just to wish everybody well and, you know, healing and, and, you know, may your grieving process and, you know, they had a vigil last night for the community and, you know, may the healing commence as they are ready for it and you know hopefully hopefully the festival will come back stronger i know if they asked me to play i'd play and donate my money to a victim's fund without sure. without a question right I, you yeah. know so you know we I, I i and it also brings to mind you know should i mention anything about this when we play on friday night i kind of feel you know like some people are like just entertain don't don't comment. I always I, I have experience with that very question, believe it or not. I haven't thought about this uh, since 2001, but I had a gig on the Friday after 9-11 mm. and I was living in Connecticut at the time and the gig was maybe a 45 minute drive from Manhattan. So these things hit you. you know, we talk about close to home. I, I was actually in Austin visiting traveling in Austin on 9-11 I was supposed to get on a plane that morning uh it was a Tuesday Not happen. no yeah. but it was a really weird thing I I stopped um on the way to the airport uh, a, a friend of mine that I had stayed with had given me some audio gear and so I stopped at the post office to mail it off and uh 
I, it, these were, you know, this was a long time ago. I had a cell phone. Not everybody did. So it wasn't a big deal. I just left it in the car, right? While I went into the post office. I was in there for 20 minutes. But while I was in there mailing this package that I didn't want to have to try and check in my luggage and pay for, it was cheaper to do it this way. Uh, I hear these people talking about what sounded like, you know, some movie they watched with planes and buildings and, you know, all the things that we know that happened on 9-11. And I thought, oh, that sounds like a crazy movie. And then I realized the people behind me are talking about the same movie. And it starts to dawn on me that something's going on. And this is literally while it's happening. Like the, the this was between the first plane and the second plane crashing. Uh, I got back to my car. There were, I think, 30 messages on my cell phone. Most most of them were from my wife, but but several were from clients that I had down in Austin who were like, so you're not leaving today. We know that. Welcome to come by the office. You know, we've got stuff for you to do if you kind of want to take your mind off of all like, like, that sort of thing. And I did. I wound up going to one of their offices and and that's where we all saw the second plane crash. So it was a very weird thing. I wound up I actually wound up getting on one of the very first flights. Uh, that flew after 9-11, but that wasn't until Thursday. So it was an interesting couple of days, but I sure. made it my goal that I was going to be home to play that gig that Friday night. I mean, I really wanted to just be home and be with my family. My wife was pregnant with our son and we had our daughter, uh, but I made the gig like no matter what, I'm making it home for that, even if I have to drive. And I'd actually started driving and then was able to get a plane. Uh, so we get to the gig and, you know, we set up and this was with the responders and, you know, we put on our suits and and we had that conversation like, what are we going to are we going to acknowledge this or is it so obvious to everyone in the room that it really doesn't need to be said? And we decided we're not going to say anything when we walk on stage and we're going to play the first set. And if it comes up naturally, fine, but we're not going to be the ones to bring it up. And. The gig was one of the best gigs that band ever played. The crowd was so into it. Everybody, it, it, you, it didn't need to be said is really what it came down to. It was just, you know, we were celebrating being together. We were all blowing off some steam. Mm. All of those things uh, really came together in a, in a very beautiful way. And it, it was a, it was in that environment. It was better unspoken than it was spoken. Uh, I also wound up playing a gig the night again proximity close to home i wound up playing a gig the night that they caught the boston bomber for the oh, wow. you know, yeah and that's close to home. really again very very close to home and um and they caught him i think during the gig if 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 memory serves so this news sort of came out it wasn't a thing that we could talk about ahead of time because you know it, it didn't happen ahead of time it happened during the gig and and Again, the same kind of thing happened with the crowd. Now, this was different, right? The bombing had already happened. This was we caught the guy and and everybody, you know, that whole Boston Strong kind of vibe yeah. really came to life. And somebody requested that we play Freebird. And we played it. And I'm, I've actually got chills here telling the story. It was one of my favorite moments ever on stage. Everybody was so into this moment together. It wasn't like the band was playing it for the crowd. We were all doing this thing together. And of course, Freebird is one of the most ridiculous songs in the world only because it has been made that way. It's actually a really, you know, well-crafted tune. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. But this was a moment where that, the kitsch portion of Freebird had nothing to do with what was going on there. It was a way we could all celebrate together. It was obviously something everybody knew. Um, and it was, it was kind of a wonderful thing. And I don't know that I've played Freebird live since then. You know, people will request it. You sing the first line or whatever and, and you don't mess with it. But, um, but I, I, I don't know that I want to play it again until it's the right time. So there you go. <laughs> so I don't know that that helps you because this is a different thing. You're actually doing the thing that was happening while this, you know, shooting happened just a less than a week prior, but I don't know that it's, I, I think it will be similar to that responders gig after nine 11. It will already be on everyone's mind. Mm. I, I, I think you just, just ride the energy. I, I, and I, and I like even better than that, I commend you and your band for doing the gig. Mm. Uh, but obviously it would be very easy to say, whoa, you know, it's not worth our safety. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe that is the decision you make. And I actually wouldn't, 
Uh, I couldn't imagine we're going to make that decision. I mean, we've got 10 more of these types of things yeah. lined up and, you know, yeah, you just you, have to again, you have going. to go on yeah. and, you know, you're, you're, you are playing the odds in most things in life all the time anyway. anyway. And that's the right vibe. I mean, it, like, you know, everything that you've said is the is to me a great way to handle this. You Acknowledging what happened, obviously you have some very strong feelings um, about what happened, but also for the people to whom it happened. But yeah. that's that. But that's but it's not changing. You know, you're not putting up a brick wall and, and staying at home. And and that would be to me I mean, that wrong to that do. would be the I mean, wrong. It would be the wrong response to this because it means, you know, in a, in a nutshell, they won. Right. Well, we do have a chance to participate in the healing for some exactly. People, right? And you have that. that right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So peace. Peace to Gilroy. Gilroy strong. And uh you know, we all go on, but uh, just did want to take a, a moment there to send my thoughts and love to Jack, his wife, D, and, uh, you know, that they may get on stage and be okay to keep doing what they're very good at doing anyway. Right. Uh, right. Very soon. Yeah. Well, that makes my, um, my issues. <laughs> I far brought the whole show down. Didn't it, well, I? it makes them inconsequential. So I have a, I, but I have a problem that I've been dealing with. So. We have this gig uh, Thursday night and it looks like it'll happen weather wise and all that. We've played it in years past. I'm sure I've talked about it on the show. Our town, Durham, New Hampshire, closes down Main Street uh, for a few hours in one summer evening and puts on an event that they call Music on Main. There are many other things that happen at this event, including this year for the first time, a pie eating contest, which sounds mm -hmm. really interesting. But obviously, music is the focus because it's right there in the name. And it's a nice little family thing. It's, you know, it's exactly what you would expect in small town, New England. It's awesome. Uh, we booked this back in February. All good. You know, it looks like when Thursday comes and this is all evolving for me, but it looks like when Thursday comes, there will be three of us on stage, two of whom are members of Fling. We are down both of our guitar players and our keyboard player. So it's me and Burke, our bass player, who are able to make the gig. It's possible one of our guitar players and our keyboard player will be there. But given some things that are happening in everyone's lives that are completely the kinds of things that you would not even bat an eyelash at excusing for missing a gig last minute are happening in people's lives. Everyone is basically okay. There, there's some, there's some healing going on medically with one of the guys, but, but he's going to be fine. But it's the kind of thing where, he, you know, he's just, he's recovering from a, a, an illness he had and he couldn't do the gig and, and various other things happening to the other guys. And, uh, when this started before the show, you asked me, why do the gig? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, this all started, a few weeks ago and it was only one guy who was going to miss, you know, and it was like, okay, we can probably do it. We've canceled this particular gig because of honestly similar problems. Somebody had a like foot surgery surprise and another guy had to leave for work and we canceled it two years ago. It was rained out halfway through last year. And I just decided, you know what? I'm doing the gig. I will put a band on that stage. I'm, I, and it really was m more about, I don't want to shift the responsibility of finding a band to, the, you know, the, the woman that's in charge of, of running our parks and recs department. I've worked with her many times and it was like, I'm going to own this one. You, you know, if it's not going to be fling, it's I, I'll make sure it's something good. And, right. you know, and so I did, I lined that up and then another thing happened. It was like, oh, okay, cool. Great. I, and But one of the guys came back and then left again. And it was this thing where we went from five to four for a while and now three, maybe four, it, you know, for Thursday. And I still don't know. I won't know until Thursday afternoon, whether it's three of us or four of us. I, I Thankfully, I was able to get and none of this. If I didn't have a, 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 a trio in which I had full confidence, I would not be putting it on that stage on, uh, you know, on Thursday night. But thank you. So the third. It's a guy named Matt Langley. I've talked about him. He plays with Monkey Fist probably half the uh, time. Yeah. He's he's the guy that's like uh, Steve Sciacotos in in in, in on your yeah. in your area. He can play anything. He can sing anything. And if he's heard a song once, uh, even if he's heard it half of once, he can he can play it. He can entertain. Uh, it, you know. So between him and Burke and me, we're fine. This is this gig's actually going to be a lot of fun. 
It was so just guitar, bass, and drums. Guitar, bass, and drums. Maybe two guitar, bass, and drums. Uh, and, I, and I would say it's 50-50 that it's two guitar, bass, and drums. Still build as fling? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, th- yes, it is. Because as we got closer and closer, it looked like I had more of fling than I now <laughs> realize I probably will have. I mean, we're two days away from the event recording this this show. So, uh, yeah, it will be. It, it is build as fling. There's no changing that at, at this point. We can, you know... Um, yeah, we'll handle explaining it. I mean, the woman who organizes things knows what's going on. I would, I would never, you know, surprise someone like that. But in terms of, you know, any, any marketing or whatever, we'll just deal with it when we get there. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's easier that way. So if you knew it was going to be this format, three guys, two from fling, would you have called it fling? Um, no, probably not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I knew, you know, three weeks ago when this started to kind of spiral a little bit, no, I, I would have changed the name or whatever. But it did not. It like like I said, even right now, I don't know what it's going to be. So it's uh, so you just kind of like sent Matt a, a set list said, come ready and away you go. Yeah. And thankfully, we get to rehearse together tonight, which is even better. Mm. Yeah, it would actually with with this particular lineup, I would trust it to work okay and we really that the event is two hours long and there's a pie eating contest in the middle where we have to take a break so, so real realistically hour and a half tops right hour and a half maybe hour and 40 minutes right mm. we as we passed the song list around i sent matt our fling song list and said you know tell me what of this you know name any other things that you want to sing because i don't i you know i want him singing a good chunk of the night he's a good singer also nobody wants to look at the drummer singing you know 75 percent of the songs so um, I would. Well, that, I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> but I try to put on an entertaining show, you know, as a package, not as a Dave. So. Uh, so anyway, you know, we passed things around. I started assigning Matt gave us the list of the things he knew and threw some things in. I, we probably have 50 songs on the list, 26 of which are songs that I've already, you know, assigned singers to. And it it, it would be fine with those 26 there's no way we're going to play 26 songs in an hour and a half. So, right. Right. So we have way You're more good. material than we need. We're fine. We probably won't play these songs anyway, because Matt's there and we'll take requests and, you know, the gig will take whatever turn it takes. And that'll be great because that's entertainment and it's all fine. But it was a little more stress than I wanted to have to deal with last week while I was on vacation and then traveling to this conference. So, sure. You know, it was and like this, um, people anyway. walking up and down the street or yep. they're seating in front of you. No, it's people walking up and down the street. Yeah. Yeah. We play right on Main Street. So it's just a collection of people in, in various it's a street things. stroll. It's a street stroll. That's a great way to put it. Yep. 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 So it'll be the mystery street stroll. Um, and maybe we'll be the mystery street stroll band. So check this out. I, I don't didn't tell you about this and I wanted to bring it up the last show, but yeah. I did a you know I have that coffee shop gig that I really like doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I just um I I love the gig and I just want to keep making it interesting. And I've done a year of it as a total solo. Most of them have been great. You know, a couple of them haven't been as attended as I would want. You know, it was like I, I had a gig there the night of the local graduation in town and it was pretty empty. And then I've had, you know, overflowing crowds there as well. So but I want to keep developing my brand as if I'm playing there, it's something worth checking out. Right. Sure. So um, I took uh, Simon and Russ from the house rockers, uh, our friend, Chris Breen. So Russ is a drummer. Simon's a guitar player. Yep. Our friend, Chris Breen and uh, my friend, Josh Baker. And I also invited Mend- Mike Mendoza, sax player from the house rockers. Nice. And I did exactly what you said. I sent around, I sent around 25 songs. And said, there will be no rehearsal. Come ready to play. Yeah. Here's the key. Yeah. Follow me. Big ears. Right. That's it. It was right. exactly. awesome. Yep. It was so fun. And everybody playing had fun because I think everybody had confidence that all the players would be ready, but you never really know. And then once it, once it started clicking, you know, it was cool. And it actually felt like a pretty, it, it was one of those things where the players were so good. It felt cohesive right yes didn't feel patched together it actually felt like a bunch of people making music together so yeah i I extended a couple solo sections and gave people a chance to warm up and stretch out i think the first thing we did was knock it on heaven's door so we just stretched that you know two or three times around for everybody to get a solo in and just kind of get the feel for the night and then you know we we got into more and more stuff and some of the stuff was 
I was really careful not to give anything that was too much brain surgery. But sure. um, like the last song of the night we did was um, American Pie, which is a lot of chords. And uh, and there's a break, you know, and yeah. there's parts to that song. And uh, but everybody you don't get a lot of opportunities to just walk in and be musical, right? When you're in a cover band, you're kind of a prepared act in many ways, right? Right. And you're not relying on your musical wits, so to speak, uh, to just walk in and make music, right? You know, I, I didn't want the guys on a hard chart. I wanted them to, and most of the songs were pretty simple forms. Form seems to be more what get you than, than actual, you know, chart, you know, chords or yeah, anything like that. Right. Um, uh, but it was so fun. And then as the night went on, it got to be more and more fun as this clearly was going to work. I had a lot of confidence in Wood because I picked the guys pretty carefully for this. But um, but uh, it became almost a thing. And then quite consciously, again, because I want this this gig to continue to grow and vibe. Uh, we build the last 45 minutes as the great lost got to sing along. And we just did, you know, audience participation songs and, Smart. you know, we, yeah. And, uh, and it's because all the solo ones I've done, I typically end this shows with stuff, stuff people know pretty well and they would sing along and they would really get a kick out of it. So I was like, Hey, there's a thing here. Yeah. So <laughs> the thing. whole band, <laughs> yeah. So the whole band, you know, we, we did, um, yeah, Margaritaville, we did Brown on Girl, we did um, uh, Hide Your Love Away, uh, you know, just, it was really, really fun. And the place was rocking and the band, I didn't know how the band would react to playing some of the, you know, what would generally be considered more tired stuff for cover bands, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. Because it was, you know, the people that you get that energy. Well, that's the trick. Solves everything, right? It's, the energy solves it all. That's right. So I, this is interesting. I realized, you know, it's been a week and plus change since we talked. Um, actually, two weeks since we talked. Yeah. I, I can give you the perspective of a of, of one of the band members in that scenario. Because a few days after we talked, I played a gig with Amanda, who I haven't, Amanda Dane. Right, who, right. Who right. I haven't played with in quite some time. And she, Have you ever rehearsed a moment with Amanda? No, no. You've, it's always just been a call and you show up and play. Correct. But she and I <laughs> played together a lot, right? It just, yeah. it hasn't been, it's maybe been six months, maybe even longer. And, and, and that's how it is with all of her people. I, I know that she has gotten together and rehearsed once or twice with, with several other people. I mean, it, it, so it's possible some of the people that I was on stage with, you know, a week ago, Thursday, had rehearsed with her but if, if so it was like once or twice it wasn't mm -hmm. you know it, it yeah and so everybody's a pickup musician which means and she's smart you know she gets people that can play and that can deal in that scenario like you said sure. big ears the competent on their instrument you, you know can learn songs on the fly the, you know that whole thing and the bass there was it was four of us it was an acoustic gig um at this place called the Dover Brick House in Dover, New Hampshire. One aside, they had their own mains, but it was throughout the venue. They had small speakers everywhere, like in the ceiling of this long rectangular room. And they just gave us a, 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 a jack to plug, or a, you know, a cable to plug into the mixer that fed those. Two great things about that. A, it didn't need to be too loud on the stage because you know, the, the people all the way at the other end had a speaker over their head and B, the club controlled the volume, which was mm. great. Yeah. Uh, so it was an acoustic thing. So I used my pitch slap. Amanda played guitar as she always does. Uh, the guitar player, CJ Lewis, he played uh, an, an acoustic guitar and sang. And then the bass player whose name escapes me and I will share in a moment here. Um, he played an upright bass, which was awesome. Really, cool. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great sound. Great kind of reverberation. Just a different vibe to it. Great. Right. Yeah. It's and it and it it was and the the thing was, you know, we all sort of met as we as we got together and uh and and the bass player and I basically just because he got there at a time where I was setting some other stuff up, we said hello to each other. Like as Amanda was counting off the first song. So we really didn't know each other <laughs> at all. There's, there's no great surprise that, you know, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, that I, that I, I'm forgetting his name because we really, what am I gonna, it's going to kill me. Jonathan Wilkins is his name. Great bass player, by the way, CJ also sang 
uh, harmonies, you know, with just like I do with Amanda. And she said something to us that was great, but she didn't need to say it. She said to both of us, she's like, look, when you guys do gigs with me and it's just a duo, you know, you're, you're each the main harmony singer. She said, just do what you do. And I have confidence that the two of you will hear what's going on and will adapt and it's going to yeah. be fine. She's like, so basically she was saying, I don't want either one of you to step back. Like th- this can be better if everyone's in it. And damn it, she wasn't right, man. Like we got, well, you know, I'll tell you this about, about a good leader, right? So there's some people that are so stressed about the letter of the law. And I think a good leader knows the capabilities of the people that are with that him or her. Absolutely. And, and lets that happen. Let's it flow based upon that. You pick right. You pick carefully. Yes. Right. You know, I was thinking about when I when I first formed my band, I I picked who I could get. Right. You know, right. there were, you know, you you don't know the the scene. You know, you just want to get something off the ground, and you're just kind of optimistic that you know, well, here's a guy who can play, and you know, yeah, he's the he's the best of the two that I had, and you know, you just kind of, and then as you're around a scene, you you network and you you have a little bit of choice, but when you first start, and you don't have choice, and you don't have the ability to actually let your intuition as a leader, you know, let you select people that, you know, you can vibe with. You're, you're just happy to get something off the ground because right. you're an experienced, right? Yes. Yes. I, I think that that is one of the great lessons over time is like a good leader has already chosen wisely and finds the appropriate places to let people do what you hired them to do. You know, that's exactly it. And by, I would say, You know, we had some moments in the first few songs where we would both go up to sing and wound up hitting, you know, the same harmony. Everybody could sing in tune. So that's not that big of a deal, although unison harmonies aren't always the best idea. Right. Um, But by halfway through that first set, we had learned where each other would naturally go and could go. And we had some three part harmonies that I mean, were just when we got to the end of the gig, we were sad. That it was over. And, <laughs> well, and, singing is the big question mark, right? You, you don't really know. That's that's the thing that, at least in, in to my mind, but not not for singers. Like when I sing with Mary Ellen and Steve, yeah. it's exactly that. Like you got the you got the third, you got the fifth. Great, let's go, and it's done. I mean, we don't have to talk about it. No. And if you know the tune and you know the words, singers sing. That's yeah. their instrument, right? We were playing some Eagles tune. I guess it was Hotel California, and. Uh, and so Amanda sang the lead on it as she did for most of the tunes. Maybe she sang lead on everything throughout the night, but, uh, but that's typically how it goes. So she, she was singing Henley and, uh, and CJ grabbed the, you know, the Glenn Fry part underneath Henley. I'm like, well, if I can't have Henley and I can't have Fry, those are my two, like in the Eagles tune, those are my go-tos. It's like, I, you know, the question is what would Timothy B. Schmidt do? And so I answered that question and out came the note and it was like, okay, that's, they looked at me and it was like, yep, here we go. Let's like, it's perfect. We all, we're all in the right spot. Let's go. And we just stayed there and it was fantastic. Yeah. Well, it just reminds you that you're a musician, right? That your ears and your brain are kind of like doing the heavy lifting here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just let it happen. Right. Right. It's it's something that, you know, some people do it when they go to open mics or jam nights, but those are a little bit of a cluster often, right? Those are, you know, the organization is kind of loose and, right. you know, the, the quality of everybody on stage can be of, of various levels. If, if anybody has a chance to do this type of thing where you just give the broad strokes of what's going to happen and pick the right people and show up, you will rediscover again, as a, as a cover band musician, you're often playing to the script. You know, you have your solos where you can step out to whatever degree that is, but you're pretty much playing down, you know, a, a well-rehearsed, you know, many times, many, a lot of experience script. Yeah. When you have an opportunity to go in and remind yourself, even if it's not original music and then, you know, it doesn't have to be a jazz jam, but to go play music that everybody kind of has in their musical dictionary, but do it in your way where you're not expected to sound exactly like the guy or anything like that. Right. Right. Of course. Crazy <laughs> rewarding. It's crazy rewarding. Well, it's and it does. It reminds you you're a musician. On the first gig. There is the potential of the sophomore slump, right? Because everybody walks, you know, I'm thinking of this Amanda gig and we haven't had our second outing as this unit yet. So it, like, it's hard to say, and everybody's a pro. So even if there is a slump, it's not going to be anything the crowd would notice. Right. But there is that, that uh, I'll call it anxiety, but, but it's certainly not crippling anxiety, but there's that. that attention. People have relaxed after the first, after uh, the yes, first. Yes. The relaxation. I mean, the second set we were relaxed for, but 
we were all still actually like the, the, the vibe of the gig was you'd better be paying attention because you don't know these people. Right. And so even mm. though the second set was a little more relaxed, there was still that vibe of you'd better be paying attention. Like this could all still fall apart if anybody takes their eye off the ball. And thankfully, obviously no one did, but right. show up for the next gig. You're like, Oh, I don't have to like, I don't have to worry about this one. This is an old hat, right? Comfortable shoes. No, no, the shoes aren't actually broken in yet. You just had a good run. That's all, you know? Well, that's it. And it's that, Oh, there was that one change that I wasn't really sure of, but the other guy picked me up on that and he'll probably be there for the next time around. So I, I can relax on it again. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. You have to assume. And we did like, there were, there was a moment where I had the groove to a song wrong and the bass player, because he was standing right next to me, starts snapping his fingers where the snare's supposed to go. And it's like, oh, got it. Thanks, man. You know, like, <laughs> but those those things have to happen all night long. Right. It's it, it. And and in order for the next gig to be as good or better, all those same formulas need to be there, like the same formula needs to be there. All those same things need to happen. And that's why, you know, I've talked about with Fling, if we rehearse the week of a gig, we found that that makes us too relaxed when we hit, hit the stage and we're not paying attention. So I will intentionally make the first three songs, songs that we haven't played in a while so that everybody's like, Oh, right. We didn't rehearse these the other night. Got to pay attention. Once you yeah. set the stage, so to speak, then it doesn't matter. Everybody's in the right mindset and it, you know, it kind of takes off from there. So, yep. But um, yeah. Well, I'll remind you, we talked about this, um, this video, Springsteen went through a long and he's still actually well, he hasn't toured for a while, but for many years, he actually has taken requests, not only of his own songs, but of kind of like classic rock, you know, sure. bar band, garage band stuff. And the band pulls him off. He I know he has a lyrics monitor in front of him. Probably a chord so, monitor, too, along with that, I would assume somebody's pulling yeah, well, chord charts, right? I, the rest of the band doesn't seem to have that, though. I mean, if you look at the stage, it's clear that it's in front of Bruce, but it doesn't seem to be in front of the rest of the band. Nice. There, there's a really famous one, uh, a video that that was actually officially released by Springsteen of them doing um, You Never Can't Tell, the Chuck Berry tune. Yeah, I remember that. And yeah. Literally, he sings the horn line to the horns and they kind of stumble their way through it. And then he counts them in and they go. I, I, I have to believe it's, you know, he clearly has the words there and he picks the, he picks the key in real time. You actually see him kind of like, Futzing through it and trying to figure out what key he wants to do it in. And then he counts the band in and they go. And I would say, you know, when a band has a common musical dictionary, when you know you're, you've, and that whole concept of choosing what, choosing carefully. Yeah. If your band mates listen to the same stuff you do, that covers a lot of ground with regards to the risk of if you just want to try something off the top of your head. That's exactly If it's right. a style of music, I, like, you know, if Nick calls it a Grateful Dead tune, I'm lost, right? I, I have no idea what the song is and, you know, where it's going. But, you know, wherever we find that we overlap and stuff, we can usually take some pretty good chances and, and come come close it's enough. Calcu- for, it's a calculated risk. Yeah, of for, course. For. Yep. Yep. So that's but it good. is really rewarding when it, when it works out. Oh. I'm glad you had that. Yeah, well, I, actually, really I was cool. texting you after I got for whatever reason. I, 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 oh, I, I guess I think I texted you after that gig to remind myself to, you know, put it on the agenda for the next show. And then the next mm-hmm. show happened to be two weeks later and I forgot completely about it till we got in the middle. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was just it was just one of those gigs where you leave and you're like, man. I did it. Like we did, did it. it. Yeah, yeah. It was freaking awesome. Great feeling. I yeah, created great something feeling. in real time. Yeah. In real time. Yeah, exactly. It was like, yep, this is great. Sweet. Nice. Beauty. I don't want to play anymore, man. except I do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to be, you know, finished for the night kind of thing. So yeah. mountain climbed. The mountain climbed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll find another one tomorrow. So yeah. is this particular mountain climbed, my friend? Or are we uh Yeah. Again, okay. it was a little heavier tonight, so a little shorter than usual, but um I even found this conversation about the possibilities of, you know, feeling that juice and electricity healing to me. So yeah. may we all go forward together and, you know, make good music and let our, what we do be part of the antidote to the bad things in the world. That's it. That's, that's the, uh, that's the way I go about it. Let's see. It's, I, I think it's a good way. I don't want to say it's the right way. Cause that makes it seem like it's the only way it is a right way in my book. So yeah, man. Amen. All right, folks. Uh, feedback at giggabpodcast.com is where you can uh, tell us your thoughts, ask us questions, and uh, don't forget about our sponsor, Van Zoogle, with promo code GIGGAB that saves you 15% off your first year. We'll talk more about that in an upcoming episode, but just wanted to make sure you knew. 
Always be performing, Dave. Always. Always. <laughs> <laughs>